Welcome back to the Garden. The Miami Heat have made their way from their locked locker room and have begun to warm up here at Madison Square Garden. We continue on this Pat Riley-focused edition of MCS Ken and Nick's Game Night with his entire story. We begin at the beginning. He was such a perfect fit for the team and for the city. He was so easily defined, at least physically, looks and hair, stylishly, the suits, and ability for rings. But after that, Pat Riley was as complex as they come. Yet the Knicks felt he was theirs for a long time and would win just like Red Holtzman once did. The team flew in style, stayed at the best hotels, had their practice facility upgraded, and played hard, hammering opponents with what became the NBA's best defense. In L.A., he had speed and style, so they ran. In New York, Riley had muscle and players with an attitude. He used it. Tough team, tough town. That was the slogan then. The Knicks and Riley battled through a successful first season and pushed the championship-bound Bulls to a seventh game. Even Riley smiled at that. The next year, they took the next step to the conference finals. The Garden rocked, but the Knicks again couldn't beat Chicago. Then, in the spring of 1994, the Knicks beat the Bulls, survived the Pacers. They had risen up to reach the finals, only to lose a three games to two lead and their title in a deciding seventh game to Houston. By the end of the 1995 playoff season, even before Patrick Ewing's layup miss in the final seconds against Indiana, the rumors had started. Was Pat Riley coming back for his fifth contracted season? Or was this painful loss leading to an exit from which he'd never look back? The post-game press conference revealed little except bitterness. I, I just don't want to get into that conversation. I will sit down with Dave and we'll talk. I haven't talked about contract for a month or two. And very involved in this process. It didn't take long, though, for the reality to hit the back page. Pat Riley wasn't coming back, and the way he resigned was startling. He faxed it in. For the last two years, he said, I had consistently and repeatedly expressed to Nick Management my desire and need to be charged with ultimate responsibility for all significant aspects of the ball club. During this time, I had tried my best to reach an agreement with management on these issues. Unhappily, the gap between us could not be bridged. Garden President Dave Checkins. It's unfair to portray that there was some sort of power struggle here. I will not apologize for the fact that uh, I believe someone has to run the organization, and I chose to do that. Uh, but I don't think in any respect, in any way, did we ever um, come in conflict, did we ever have anything that was at all even an issue. However, he has decided to leave. It is his decision. It is one we regret. The media reaction was swift and negative. Pat Riley, who spoke in terms of covenants and commitments that had to come straight from the heart, was perceived as nothing more than a quitter. I planted my feet on a philosophical, positional, financial, whatever it is, on a principle. And when you come to an impasse, you've got to make a decision as a person. I mean, you either leave or you go on and be embittered because you've accepted something you didn't want. And I wasn't going to do that. He wasn't unemployed long. The Miami Heat gave him a $40 million deal, part ownership, absolute power. But did they tamper? There was never, ever any contact on my behalf or anybody who represented me legally to, uh, to make a deal with anybody until after I resigned. The fact is, Pat Riley was lying. There was contact. The Knicks say as early as February, $1 million in a draft pick tells you tampering was committed. It's like the end of an era. Uh, but it's the beginning of another very exciting era. That era, of course, includes Don Nelson. He and the Knicks, by the way, are getting along just fine. MCS Canada Knicks Game Night is brought to you in part by Beachwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. To get a deal as good as he, he got, I mean, you'd do the same thing. And I know I would. So, you know, I can't blame him for it. I, even though I'm sad to see him go, I still can't, you know, blame him. The way he left, you know, you know who to say, you know. Uh, he, I had a feeling after the season was over with that he was going to leave anyway. So it wasn't a shock to me. It may have been a shock to a lot of other people, you know, on the outside looking in. But not to me. I had a feeling that he was going to leave. And I looked at it as uh, it was time for a change. And he felt the same way, I believe, if you honestly asked him. You know, he felt that it was time for a change and he needed to move on because he took us as far as he can take us mentally as well as physically. I've been saying this all along. Do you feel like he owed you an explanation? Did you get one? And, and what are your feelings about the way he left? 
Well, I did talk to Coach Riley after he left. He, uh, he did give me a call and explain his situation. You know, I think it was a lot of business involved, and I think in, when business takes over in any situation, anything can happen, and I think that's basically how it was. The guys kind of knew, I think. Really? Yeah. Why did you, how'd you know? Well, just some of the things he said during the year and at the end of the year. So, did he know, say stuff to you guys that the public didn't know? Right, but you know, in our meetings we had a lot of talks, and you can just tell about some of the things he said. And you know, it's just getting on his nerves. You can see it working on his nerves. The last meeting on the season, we had a big meeting, and we was in there and we talking about how he was preparing for the next year and this and that, and you know, all this hard with the Knicks. And next thing you know, two days later, your heart does so change to Miami Heat. So. I think it was just all a big balloon, just inflated and came and just told us the story and the next day, a couple of days, and just packed his bags up and left. You know, with Coach Riley, sometimes you just held back some things you wanted to say, you just kept them to yourself. It didn't, it wasn't the same feeling of an open door like that, like it is here. So, we're all happy with Nelly. As for tonight, most of the Knicks players are giving it pretty much of a no big deal. We thought it was much more compelling to hear their thoughts before the season began, and they're off to a very good start at 17-6. and six. Marv Albert and John Andres are on the scene, but before their turn, Michael Kay and Bob Page will hear from the fans. Studios, as you regular viewers know, we had our little set to here on the air the other night about this Riley situation. I'm not upset about Riley. Michael is still livid. So what do you have now, pal? Well, what I did after that little set to, I actually spoke to some of the people in the stands. I really thought that they'd be about 90% against Riley, but it was about 50-50. They agree with me. Yeah, well, I guess so, 50% <laughs> too. But you, you'll hear the comments. The comments they made are somewhat surprising. They're going to be kind of hard on Pat Riley. He's going to get him for a rough night. I think that Riley really disappointed us in New York. We thought Riley was the perfect gentleman, and he proved us wrong. I don't think the fans are going to receive him too well. He's a traitor. He went for the money. He went for the bucks. Uh, the Knicks don't need him, though, because Nelson's doing fine, and we don't need Riley. So, good riddance. Do you boo Pat Riley or do you not boo Pat Riley? No, I don't boo Pat Riley. He's a great coach and uh, he had to move on and do what he had to do. Uh, so, I mean, it, it should be a good game. And no, I don't boo Pat Riley. I think he should be in jail. <laughs> Why? He didn't finish his contract with the Knicks. Uh, I think the fashion industry will accept him. It's like an ovation. But I think the regular blue collar guy will be behind Nelson. And in the end, it'll be a Knicks crowd. I feel he's a turncoat and a traitor, and basically we don't need him because we're still doing well without him. I feel that the way he left, it was messed up. He should have stayed and, you know, with his team, you know, but he left, and it's not the same without him, though. He did a good job when he was here. He did what he could do, and, uh, you know, time to move on. No problem with the way he left? No problem whatsoever. Uh, how about you? What's your take on Riley? I think, I think Fats the man. I think Fats the winner. You know, I mean, the thing of it is, you know, it's a shame to see him go, but tell, look what he's doing down in Miami this year. I mean, what are they, 11-3 and three this year, so he's a winner wherever he goes. So you also have no problem with the, the way he left breaking the contract? I, I, a little bit of a problem, but I tell you, I'm happy for Pat. He's doing the right thing. He's doing what's right for Pat. How about you? What's your take? Short and sweet. I'm a fan. I'm with him all 100%. Really? And you have no problem with the way he left? Not at all. Me, myself, I got tickets for Tuesday, and I think um, I, myself, am going to boo him for the way he left New York and the Knicks. All right, Riley comes back on Tuesday. What do you think the reception is going to be? I think the Knicks fans are going to be a little uh, resentful to what he did. I think uh, they do not like how he left uh, New York. He didn't fulfill his contract, and he didn't win a championship. That's the bottom line. He didn't fulfill his contract. He's a loser. The Knicks don't need him. Why do you feel that way? He left. They're going to be a little mean. He better watch out. <laughs> I know I'm going to be a little... Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be too nice to him, that's for sure. I don't like the way he left, and I'm a little upset about it. I think there's going to be a lot of animosity towards Riley, but I also think that it was time for Riley to get out. I mean, he spent four years here in New York, and he just could not get the job done, so I'm all about Nelly Ball. Well, unfortunately, there will be people who are thinking about the past, but we're excited about the future, and in that regard, we wish him all the best. I don't know. I just think that maybe he should have just stood up and faced the fire and, instead of doing it by fact. But that's over with. Teams win. See what happens. And he got the money. He got the money that he wanted and the power. So I think it worked out for both sides. A remarkably un.
scientific demonstration by Mr. K, who deliberately sought out those individuals in the stands who would corroborate his own particular worldview, including paying those little kids, didn't you? I'll tell you what, though, the people that didn't agree with me, it just shows the disintegration of society that they could just <laughs> poo-poo, breaking of a contract. Amazing to me. Let's just get it over with. And without Alonzo Mourning, Riley's going to get his tonight anyway. I don't mean just booing. The pregame show continues in a moment. Day he left. In four years, as coach of the next, we experience big games, high drama, his style, and the winner within. The players, especially Patrick Ewing, have nothing but good memories and wishes for Pat Riley, and there's good reason. He taught them how to win. But not everyone feels that way because of the unethical way he parted company with Garden President Dave Checkets. They just couldn't agree, he said. Either way, Pat Riley commands attention and creates excitement. He left, of course, for power. He said he wasn't given. Part ownership and $40 million were nice throw-ins, though. And minutes from now, we'll know if the Knicks fans forgive him or condemn Pat Riley. He said, I will coach a game in front of an audience that for four years made my life worthwhile. Tonight, they've switched sides, these two men, in the hallway of the Garden. And New York, it seems, can't wait to see what happens when Pat Riley returns. welcomes you live to the world's most famous arena. And tonight at Madison Square Garden, a regular season game with much larger implications as the New York Knicks, cruising along at 17 and 6, take on the suddenly struggling Miami Heat. They start at 11 and 3, but they've lost their last four. They're 12 and 9. And of course, they're playing without so much in Alonzo Mourning being out. And big Kevin Willis, Sasha Danilovich, and also Billy Owens. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Trowick, just outside the Miami Heat dressing room. That is it over there. Pat Riley has not yet made an appearance, so we do not have a reaction. Pat Riley walked about 20 feet from the elevator over there into the dressing room, closed the door, and it was locked. There was no media access whatsoever. He is doing his best to low-key it as he returns to Madison Square Garden. But it won't be low-key when he makes the walk about 15 yards to my right out into the sold-out Madison Square Garden. Whether it's full tonight remains to be another question. Obviously, the weather here in Midtown and in the New York City area is bad. It'll probably keep some people away, but you can bet if they're not here, they are watching right along with you. So the Miami Heat come in with problems. They're shooting only 40% in this four-game losing streak, and a tight race in the NBA's Atlantic Division is now once again a two-team affair. But you can bet when Alonzo Mourning comes back in a week or two, things will dramatically change. We'll be uh, waiting for this moment to take place. Pat Riley's return to the Garden. It should only be moments moments away, but to give you further opinion, let's go to Marv Albert and John Andres on the floor. Marv? All right, Alan, John, the uh, moment that Pat Riley was not looking forward to is about to take place, and apparently, here he comes, making his way from the dressing room, underneath the corridor. You will hear the reaction in just a moment. Here comes Pat Riley, who last appeared at this Madison Square Garden court May 21st of last season. quite frankly. I admire him for doing that, and he succeeded in winning a lot of the cheers that we just heard. Well, now here comes the chant uh, from the uh, crowd here at uh, Madison Square Garden. I'm certain we'll hear some of this right throughout, but I felt, John, that uh, some of this would be diffused because the Knicks have been successful under Don Nelson. Yes, Marv, but I, I 
think Pat has succeeded in something here tonight. Um, I'm surprised at the reaction in, in many ways, but I think he did a smart thing in what he did. All right, right now, the singing of our national anthem, WFAN Radio's Susan Waldman. Of WFAN Radio. And uh, the crowd reaction should be intriguing the rest of the way. It's hard to predict uh, what will be happening, but uh, you can be certain this is not the lineup that Pat Riley wanted to bring to Madison Square Garden for his first appearance. This is an injury hit Miami Heat ball club. And here are the introductions of the starting lineup. Virginia Tech, number 12, Bimbo Cole. Forward as 6A from Alabama, number two, Keith Haskins. And forward as 6'9 from TCU, number 40, Kurt Thomas. At center at 6'11 from Syracuse, number 24, Dan Shades. The trainer is Ron Culp. The assistant trainer, Jay Sable. Assistant coaches, Scotty Robertson, Bob McAdoo, Stan Van Gundy, and Tony Fiorentino. And the head coach, Pat Riley. Sasha Danilovich and Kevin Willis will not play due to injury.